Okay, today we're talking about a day in the life of a residential service technician like myself. So what does a residential service technician do? Um, you're gonna drive a company service vehicle, usually a van, uh, around to company-owned rental houses and perform plumbing, electrical, appliance, structural, HVAC, and drywall repairs. Um, I only have to work on rental houses. The company I work for, they don't own apartment buildings. Woo! So just to clarify that. Uh, you're going to provide good customer service to your residents. You know, be friendly, polite, professional. Um, Give them a courtesy call, maybe, you know, 20, 30 minutes before you're heading to their house so they know you're on your way. Uh, you're going to inspect uh, vacant houses. So houses that are newly purchased, that are getting ready to rent, or houses where maybe the previous resident just moved out, or a vacant house where a resident is getting ready to move in. And of course, you know, you complete and or create assigned work orders. So say you go to a, a, a customer's house and they have you fix the toilet, but while you're there, they ask, hey, can you look at my light fixture? It's not working. Then you would create a new work order for that light fixture, as an example. Uh, you would buy and or order parts and supplies as needed to stock your van. Uh, so depending on your employer, they may have specific vendors they want you to buy parts from uh, and then inventory the van stock as required by your employer and you might have an app on your company iPad to make inventory quick and easy you might even have an app where you um, can check out parts from your van and assign them to the work order that you're working on uh, and then you're going to take your company van in for service as needed, you know, oil and filter change, etc. And then keep track of your insurance and registration cards. Make sure you keep those up to date. Don't let them expire. And then keep up to date on your training. And I'd recommend uh, acquiring additional certifications, you know, because the more certs you can acquire, you can take those with you throughout your life. They look good on your resume. Um, they can help give you some leverage when it comes time to, to earning a pay increase. So about certifications. Um, obviously, it goes without saying you need a driver's license with a clean driving record. <laughs> um, but what I find is a lot of companies really strongly would prefer you also have an EPA Section 608 HVAC certification. Now there's different types of EPA Section 608 certifications. There's type one, type two, type three. There's universal. Uh, there's a green certification. There's an indoor air quality certification. Uh, there's a, a certified maintenance technician. So you can get all of those or any combination of those to suit your specific situation. Uh, and then, of course, you can go to your local state and get your plumbing apprentice license, uh, apprentice electrician license. Um, also, another big one I found in the, the residential industry is being a certified uh, lead uh, renovator. And I was fortunate enough, my current employer paid for that course for me. But again, that's a great cert that you can keep with you as you go through your career path. Um, I also have an OSHA 10-hour construction card, uh, and specifically it's for the OSHA 29 CFR 1926 standards. Uh, so basically it's, you know, construction site safety, wear proper PPE, know how to use hand tools, power tools safely, etc. Regarding tools, this is my everyday go bag. Um, and to be honest, I don't have to carry this into every single house I go into. Because if you're just going into a house to do an inspection, why are you going to carry your entire go bag into the house? You know, save your back, leave it on the van. 
or sometimes I'll just take the one or two tools I need and my company iPad and I'm good. And you'll note in the center of my go bag, I try to leave that an open space and that's where I put my company iPad. Um, if I got you know some small parts I want to carry in with me, I'll throw it in that center area. But it's basically just common hand tools in here. Um, you know, wire cutters, wire strippers, adjustable wrench, pliers, channel locks, um, a six in one screwdriver, you know, a, a razor blade, flashlight, putty knife, temp gun, picks, gloves, multimeter, vice grips, earplugs, etc. I also have this other bucket on my van that I leave on the van and it's a five gallon bucket with this tool organizer that slides over the bucket. You can buy this at Home Depot. Just a quick disclaimer, uh, all the tools and supplies you see on this video um, and vendors I speak about, this is not a promotional video for any of them. I'm not getting paid to mention any of them. I just want to make that clear. So this five gallon bucket is tools that I need once in a while or that are big and bulky and heavy that I don't want to carry in my go bag. So things like my, my larger pair of channel locks, my cordless drill driver, my little hacksaw, my basin wrench. Um, I got some other specialty plumbing tools in there. You get the idea. <laughs> So a quick uh, service van tour. This is my service van. It's a Dodge Ram 2022. This is a driver's area. As we step back into the van, go through the partition, there's a partition door. Up top is a bit of a grandma's attic. And the partition door I usually leave open during the, the day while I'm working, just like that. There's a side door, fire extinguisher, there's my go bag. On the other side, we have shelving with parts bins. There's my shop vac. Again, you got your plumbing supplies, flush valves, fill valves, P traps, garbage disposals. And then moving over, we got some HVAC stuff, you know, like capacitors up there. We've got some batteries, bubble leak detector trash bags, light bulbs, coil cleaner, there's your capacitors. Safety switch, thermostats, garden hose, extra bungee cords, little sump pump. There's the back doors. Nice thing, these lights, you can turn them on and off Pretty nice a coil brush to clean out like refrigerator coils, broom, extension cord, plunger. On this side, we got some consumables, gloves, first aid kit, smoke detectors, electrical stuff, drywall stuff, painting stuff, lubricants, caulking, ladder. And then this little storage unit here, these slide out plastic uh, storage containers have a clear lid so you can see what's inside. So you got some shark bite fittings, fuses, some mowing cartridges, more mowing parts, and then some miscellaneous specialty tools. That's about it for the, the service van. One thing I want to note, if you look down here behind the driver's seat, there's this power inverter. This one is rated for, I want to say uh, 2000 watts. There's the battery cables. They run through the partition to a 12 volt battery that sits behind the partition. That's a great thing to have in your service van. It sits back there. Um, that works well. I, I ran my shop back off, off, off of that, uh, work light off of that, um, my little space heater. 
So if you know if you got to run your skill saw, etc., it's a nice nice thing to have on your surface fan is that inverter. So some quick work examples, some average you know common things you'll do: re repair or excuse me, replace uh, flush valves, fill valves, flapper valves, and toilets. That's a pretty common maintenance item. Another one that I get a lot um, are work order requests for outlets that don't work. Um, and a lot of times what I find is there'll be a GFCI outlet that's tripped. And because that one's tripped, it feeds power to the outlet that's dead. Reset the GFCI and you get your power back to that outlet. That's also a great tool to have, that ideal circuit tester. I highly recommend that. Um, that's a number 61-500. Or you'll go to someone's house and they won't think to check their circuit breaker and you'll walk out and it'll be a, a trip circuit breaker. Now sometimes it's not always that easy, but I frequently find usually you try the simple easy things first. Um, HVAC filters, that's another one I notice people neglect quite often. You know, they'll complain that their air conditioner is not getting cold or their furnace shuts down and you pull out their filter and it hasn't ever been changed or is completely plugged with dirt and debris. Another common one I seem to do, particularly obviously on vacant houses, is changing out deadbolts, you know, your exterior man door, front door, garage door, etc. My company likes using these quick sets because they can be rekeyed. It's pretty straightforward replacing a deadbolt, doorknob, etc. Also, sometimes you have to place weather stripping around uh, like a front door. Um, also get a lot of sliding glass doors like back patio doors where the it won't latch or lock properly. And so you just need to adjust it to get it to lock. That's another common work order. Another common one I get is for refrigerators that aren't cooling properly. Um, oftentimes I find that the coils have not been cleaned and so they'll be completely plugged up with dirt and dog hair etc that's going to restrict the airflow going across the coils and the refrigerator will not cool properly so i'll gently blow off all the dust and dog hair or gently use my shop vac in there to clean the coils I just fast forward a little bit give you a better look at the coils here so you can see this one's actually not too bad, a little bit dusty. I've seen them a lot worse than this. While you're down there, check the fan, make sure it turns on. Check the compressor, make sure it's running. But clean all of this while you're down there. So you get that good clean airflow going through your coils. I hope this information helps. Please like, share, subscribe. Leave me a comment for future video topics you would like me to cover. Thanks for watching.